Uh, my name is Margaret Kiljoy. I go by Magpie. Uh, my day-to-day -day life. Um, and I recently edited a book called Myth Makers and Lawbreakers: Anarchist Writers on Fiction, which is here. Um, and uh, Carissa is actually um, her first novel, uh, Yours for the Revolution, is probably the first like bound book of like anarchist fiction that I ever found when I like was like a newly minted travel kid anarchist and like living in squats and you know hopping freight trains and stuff. Uh, it was around when this book came out, and it's it's kind of what the book is about. So of course it was you know. A, a good book for me to read at that time and all of that stuff. So I was pretty excited to include her um, in this collection. I interviewed 15 different uh, anarchist fiction writers about their politics and how their politics interact with their fiction. Um, and um, when I um, remember to put my water in the place that I want to put it, um, when I first came out with this book, uh, it came out last October. Um, and my book release was at um, the Baltimore Book Festival, which is a mainstream book festival. There's a lot of anarchist book festivals. Um, but this one's like a, a normal book festival uh, that the radicals have a tent in, um, and like a, a big pavilion of books, and then another big pavilion for radical speakers to come speak at it. And I really like it because it's like integrated in the rest of society and all of that stuff, but still a radical event. And so I was trying to figure out what it is I was going to talk about um, at this book release. And so I'm kind of wandering around, a little bit panicked. and. Um, and there are these two giant boards um, of the top 100 English language novels of the 20th century. It's a very pretentious list to come up with, but, but there they were. And I looked at it, and um, three of the top five were written by people who came up with my research of anarchist fiction. Um, because two of the top five were written by James Joyce, who identified with uh, syndicalist anarchism and individualist anarchism at various points, mostly in his youth, but uh, stayed philosophically attached to anarchism throughout the rest of his life. And number five was Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. And Aldous Huxley, in the introduction of one of his later books, I believe it was Island, um, said, what the world needs now is decentralization of a Kropotkinesque manner, uh, which is anarchism. Um, Kropotkin is one of the most important 19th century anarchist theorists. And so here's um, Huxley saying, no, what we need are Kropotkin's ideas, which were explicitly anarchist. And that really struck me. That's three of the top five of the top, you know, hundred novels. And then I went through and looked at the rest of the list and there were eleven on the list um, that came up explicitly in my like actually really picky viewing. Uh, I was only looking at stuff through the anarchist lens which really ignores a lot of really important radicalism, um, a lot of really important feminist radicalism um, just because if I couldn't come up with someone specifically identifying with anarchism I didn't focus on them in my research unfortunately. Um, and uh, so 11 of the top 100, and that really blew my mind. And then I was walking around the rest of the book festival, and there was a, uh, a placard for uh, a theater company putting on a play by Oscar Wilde. And Oscar Wilde's uh, the most famously misquoted person in history or whatever. Um, he was a playwright in uh, the late 19th century, uh, and also a novelist um, and story writer. And he was once being interviewed by a, uh, like a pulp magazine, a, a theater magazine. Uh, they came up to him and they said, Mr. Wilde, you know, what do you have to say about people accusing you of being a socialist? And he, he looks at them and he says, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm something of an anarchist. And um, expecting, you know, expecting to insult him by calling him a socialist. Uh, but actually he was much more radical than, than they give him credit for. Um, some of his quotes include, um, the best government for an artist to live under is no government at all. Um, and... Uh, Okay, so what is what is uh, anarchism? And if I feel like if I have to explain anarchism, I have to explain fiction because both are like really natural ideas, as far as I'm concerned. Um, fiction, the the thing I think of with fiction is I think of uh, George Washington. George Washington is like this tall or something, and he goes out and he cuts down a cherry tree. I, mean, I don't know why. And he cuts down a cherry tree. His dad comes out and says, "Hey, George Washington, why'd you cut down that cherry tree?" Because his dad calls him by his first and last name, and I'm not sure why. George Washington, why'd you cut down that cherry tree? Cher uh, and George Washington says. Oh no, it says, did you cut down cherry tree? Anyway, uh, George Washington says, uh, I cannot tell a lie. I cut down that cherry tree. And that whole story is a lie. Uh, that didn't happen. Um, and that's a lie told to us by authority by why we should tell the truth to authority, which is sort of weird and backwards. Um, and that's, that's a basic idea of fiction, unfortunately. This is a, a propagandist idea of fiction, but that is a, a lie told as a story to influence people's opinions, uh, to influence people's behavior. Um, and not that all fiction needs to be propaganda overtly, 
Um, but all fiction does carry ideas, um, and some of them are bad ideas. Um, like in my mind, telling the truth to authority just cause. Um, so then there's anarchism. Um, I like to misquote uh, Ursula K. Le Guin. I'd like to quote her right, but I always keep misquoting it. Ursula K. Le Guin is a science fiction writer um, and is probably like the most famous of the people I interviewed. Um, and uh, she wrote a short story called The Day Before the Revolution. And in The Day Before the Revolution, there's a character, Odo, who's like a Kropotkin, essentially a woman who's uh, an anarchist thinker. And, uh, and it comes up, okay, so her quote about what anarchism is, is an anarchist is one who, given the choice, chooses responsibility. And, uh, and those are the two important facets of anarchism, is freedom and responsibility. Um, and the way that manifests is a society without uh, government or the state per se. Um, but you're talking about, um, in our society, you have, fr uh, you have responsibility, but you have no corresponding freedom. You have to obey certain laws. You have no freedom, um, just in general, um, because you have to do these things. Um, and you don't, and you have, so you have responsibility to do these things, but you don't have freedom. And then you have the inverse of that, which is freedom without responsibility. And uh, the comparison I make is also when I was probably reading uh, Carissa's book, I was also a drunk punk squatter peeing in the corner of the house I lived in. Um, and that's not really, like, that's, that's freedom without responsibility. You have to take responsibility for what you're doing. Um, and that's how a society can function without government. And, uh, and that's how societies have and will, again, uh, function without government or without the state. You can get into all kinds of nitpicking and beyond that about what anarchism is. But um, So I got involved in researching anarchist fiction because I was writing anarchist fiction. Um, and I wasn't reading enough of it because I couldn't find it. Um, and I, uh, I was publishing anarchist fiction. I used to publish a magazine called Steampunk Magazine that's now published by a collective in the UK um, instead of me pretending like I was going to have a collective here in the US. But it all by myself, and then someone else did, it's great. Okay, um, and I was publishing this fiction. I was publishing my own, and I was publishing one of my friends, who I'm gonna talk about a little bit later, named Professor Calamity. Um, and uh, uh, I wanted to know who else was doing this, because I, I felt like I wasn't finding any anywhere. So I went down to the Anarchist Book Festival, Book Fair in uh, the Bay, which is uh, down. See, now it would be up, because I'm in LA. But I was in Portland at the time. Uh, and so I went down to the Bay, to go find all the anarchist fiction. I was really excited. I had my friend's car. I was going to fill it up with anarchist fiction books. I was, you know, very excited. And I went down there and I found a total of two novels uh, in the entire book festival. If anyone hasn't been, it's like this giant convention center filled with, you know, all the anarchist publishers and all the radical publishers and all of the infighting and fun and craziness. Um, and, um, you know, people refuse to pay for tables sitting outside hawking zines and stuff like that. Um, and I found two novels, uh, and one of them really kind of sums up some of the problems with activist fiction, um, which is the awkwardly titled My Journey with Aristotle to the Anarchist Utopia by Graham Purchase. And this is one of the two novels I find, and as you might imagine in this novel, someone uh, is conked on the head during a workers' riot, wakes up a thousand years later, and is shown an anarchist utopia by someone named Aristotle. There's no plot, there's no character development, there's no tension, there's no grammar. Um, but it's a really good anarchist utopia, and it's written by this guy with a PhD who's a green syndicalist who used to live in Australia, and now I can't track him down, he lives somewhere in India. Um, but it's, it's terribly written, it's not particularly interesting, except unless you really want to read about anarchist utopias, which I do, but not everyone does. And so this is really problematic. I left like distraught. I was like, this is terrible, everything's ruined. I wasn't actually, this is distraught, but I'm trying to make a hyperbole here. Um, and, uh, and so I went back up to Portland, and I wrote Ursula K. Le Guin a letter. Um, she also lives in Portland, and I wrote her and was like, look, you know, I'm a fan of your work. Uh, I'd like to interview you about anarchist fiction. I want to find out more about it. I want to find out what it means to be an anarchist fiction writer. Um, and she wrote back, and she was really excited about the project, and, um, and we corresponded, and then I did an interview. Um, and that really got everything started. Um, with uh, what is now Mythmakers and Lawbreakers. Um, and I started turning up anarchists everywhere once I did this. Um, I think partly because I would ask people if they want to be part of this book, and they would be like, what? Ursula K. Le Guin's in it? Yes, I want to be part of that book. Um, but 